We have a saying around here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no brains, no headache. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, boys. What's up? What's up? Damn, son, where'd you find this? Episode 209, No Brains, No Headache podcast starts right about now. We have a guest this week, and he's the co-host of the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. His name is Matt Cleary, my longtime friend, fellow comedian, co-host, confidant of the show. Always good to have him here. Uh, this week, you're just our guest as well, apparently. My name is Jordan Weichel. I'm going to be your host today for yet another episode of the mindlessly entertaining show we call... No Brains, No Headache podcast coming to you live from Bismarck, North Dakota. We're in the upper Midwest. It is hard nipple season here, Matt. We're back to full circle. We got the cold winters. Your nipples get hard. Now it's so hot. The AC's blasting. Why do you think I'm wearing the jacket? Uh, there's certain bars that are like airport hangers that you, in the winter, entirely too hot. In the summer, entirely too cold. Well, yeah, it's, it's cold outside. It's full circle. Now we're experiencing the uh, hard nipple epidemic, you could call it, of the summer. Just a lot of AC blasting. You know, we're here in this, uh, what, what you would call a basement. Maybe not everyone's familiar with the basement, but that's what we're in. And uh, it's chilly. It's really chilly. Uh, I even had the window open, propped open with our tums. Uh, classic NBNH move. That's a power move right there. We're going to talk about those in a little bit here. Uh, how was your day, Matt? It was good. Did you uh, watch any of the All-Star game? No. Uh, the MLB All-Star game lost its luster. Uh, I knew before going in that the AL was going to win. They win every year. I think the NL's won like one time since 2000 or something. It's a weird stat. Yeah. No, uh, I did not watch. Um I just feel as if though the home run derby and the All Star, the MLB All Star game, have really just lost it. I'll tell you what didn't lose it was the national anthem. Yeah, what's this about? I, I have obviously saw the video, but I, I don't watch it when I know something is not good. It's negative. It's cringe. I don't want to click on it, but I did see everybody talking about it, and I did see the aftermath. I think there was a lot of people like you know the first major sporting event after an attempted assassination of a presidential candidate. Usually that's the one like the crowd sings and it's like, wow, this gave me goosebumps. Well, Ingrid Andress. Yeah. Never heard of this woman before. I had not either. Uh, turns out so saying, good for her way to get in the limelight. And your first introduction to somebody like ourselves yes. is, uh, the worst national <laughs> anthem that anyone has ever sang. I it beats out Fergie. Do we, do we want to play a, a little uh, clip of this? I mean, you I haven't listened to it yet. It's it's pretty comically bad. Um, and then she came out a couple days later. She was shit faced. <laughs> well, wasn't it like the very next day? She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was hammered. I'm going to rehab. And it's like, wow. What'd you do on your way to rehab? I sang Can the national. Can you see by the dawn's she does look a little bit drunk. What so proudly we hail by the twilight last glow. So is Ingrid from Poland? She's uh, she's giving me some uh some Western European vibes. That's what she sounds like. I mean, like. she's a country artist. That'd be a real No, I know, I know she's one. not from uh, Poland, but um that's a tough look you know what it makes me feel a lot better as an entertainer uh that i only made a drunken ass of myself in front of like i don't know 80 to 100 80 people. to 100 people yeah this wasn't the mlb all-star game do you think that uh whoever hired her on the mlb side is is getting fired right now 100 percent. i don't even know how that happens how you hire uh Somebody to sing the national anthem and then they're wasted. I do you not know how that happens. My guess would be indulging in copious amounts of alcohol pregame. I just don't know how something like that that's so planned and scripted that is that messed up. 
Well, that's just the world we live in, I guess. Uh, anything can happen. You know what? I'm going to give kudos to Ingrid. She's bringing back uh, the old the old way of entertainment where everyone's just on some sort of uh, drug. Her drug of choice, alcohol. Can she handle it? Clearly not. How was the rest of the anthem? I'm not going to listen to the rest, but how was it? It got worse. Oh, it did get worse. Yeah, that was the best part I've ever heard of it. Well, and then she, yeah, she did make a post saying, uh, I was drunk, I'm going to rehab. It's like, I saw that post, and I was like, wow, we're really jumping the gun here. If I woke up, you know, the morning after maybe not doing something too desirable, I would probably would have been in and out of rehab 37 times by now. I mean... <laughs> Uh, this week yeah <laughs> i would have been in rehab twice actually in the last four days you know but tough tough look um and then the next night cody johnson comes in sings the national anthem and everyone's like yep that's how it's done yeah who is ingrid who is this ingrid all uh, what is her name allness andrus andrus in ingrid andrus how how come i've never heard of her and why is she singing uh the national anthem um i the, she is got it picked. because it's the home run derby and they don't really care I, I think so if i'm being honest and it was kind of weird how they had them like s all the players sitting on star or like standing on stars like honestly i just want the home run derby give me 10 outs no i want steroids back first of all yep um early 2000s home run derbies yeah yeah that's that's why that was our childhood that's why yep. I remember, you know, it's you know middle of summertime. It's the All Star break, but guess what? I'm tuning in on a Monday evening to the Home Run Derby. I mean, there's nothing better than even doing the Home Run Derby on Ken Griffey Jr. Slugfest 2001 when it's A Rod, Ken Griffey, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. Well, it's an All Star squad right there, and that's why it's All Star Weekend. But yeah, it's really lost its luster. I want steroids back. And then I don't like how they do they do these jerseys that are ugly as hell. I actually did like them this year. You did. I wish they weren't as neon. If they were a oh, little bit man, more, were dull. they ugly? I liked them. Honestly, it looks like they well clearly they had so whoever chose the national anthem singer also was in charge of uh, creating and designing the jerseys. <laughs> they did kind of... I liked the concept of them. I didn't like the colors. I liked like the just the National League playing, but it did look like a K-pop band picked out the colors. I want the days back where they wear their jersey, yep. yeah. their pants, and then the hat is... You, you yeah, do the ultimately, hat. that's what... What we are doing in American professional sports right now is too much. You see the City Connect jerseys? It's like the Minnesota Twins. Their colors are um, like a dark blue, kind of, would you say, and a red. And then their City Connects are like turquoise. I, I, it, it doesn't make any I, sense I will say the me. Cubs City Connect jerseys are sweet. Well, you're biased. You're a Cubs um, fan. Look at Clark here. He says, have a great day. I love Clark. Um, he, he did win the home run derby for the mascots, so shout out Clark. He did. I did DM uh, Clark the Cub Instagram account asking how much it would take to get him at my next birthday party. So TBD on that. Um, but what was I gonna say? I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. Uh, baseball, baseball. Oh yeah, the, steroids. Uh, the uh, have you seen the Cardinals City Connect jerseys? I haven't seen all these City Connect jerseys because I don't want to see them. They're ugly. It's We're doing too much. Let's stick to the basics. Let's get back to the fundamentals. Steroids <laughs> and a juicy home run race. Uh, it, but the Cardinals, it just says the Lou on it, which translates to the toilet. Uh, yes. I visited the Lou three times before noon today. All right, let's get into the show, <laughs> shall we? Uh, we got a juicy one, yeah. 209. Power move of the century. This is going back into the 90s. Uh, you're familiar with Quentin Tarantino, right? Yes. And Selma Hayek? Yes. So, uh, I just saw this post and I was like, I think right. I know where this is yeah. going. Reminder that Quentin Tarantino wrote a scene in Dust Till Dawn where Selma Hayek pours tequila down her leg and forces a guy to drink it by sucking on her toes. And then he casts himself as the guy. Yeah. 
Well, in Django, he casts himself as a racist slave owner. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean you know, he, he doesn't like, take all the glory. <laughs> I gave myself a really good one a little long while ago. You know what? I need to backtrack, pull myself in. Yeah. Selma Hayek, just, she doesn't age, it seems like. I feel like she's getting hotter. And yeah, that's just the way it goes. She's a fine wine, getting better with time. We've seen it. No, we don't really see it all that I, often. I mean, Jennifer Aniston. Yes, yes, I mean sir. we we could do an Olympics of like females over fifty. Just say if I uh, showed the guys at the office Selma Hayek, she'd be boner of the month. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, we're having fun. These shoes are Italian; they're worth more than your life. Yeah, uh, I had I had an Italian soda heard it earlier. Yeah, what kind did you get? Uh, I got a blue raspberry coconut. Did you get it with cream? Of course, uh, yeah. you you got to get it with cream, and then that also inspired me. Uh, I'm gonna make some Italian sodas. I've been working on how I say that because you called me out on it, and uh, personally, you can just f off. <laughs> it's my it's my nomenclature. Okay. It, was a, it was a real riff in uh, but, the friendship. Also, you say motor weird. Motor, Mo motor, motor. Maybe motor. Okay, you don't. Maybe someone else did. Engine. Engine. I also can't say the word peculiar. Yeah, well, you get past a certain amount of letters, you, Matt just kind of drops off. But all it the sits. Italian soda is is ice, uh, soda water, or whatever. Yep. Uh, the the syrup, the seat, the the yep. flavoring, cream. Yeah, I when I used to make them at home, I used to just instead of cream, I just use a little splash of milk. Yeah, I mean, that would work too, but... It's, it's so simple, they're so oh, good. Then I got to rip your float, and uh, I kind of, like, wasn't at home all day, and I knew I was coming here. And thank God for Tide to go pens, uh, but can underneath. you see? Oh, did I miss a spot? I, I thought I saw a spot. Oh. Where is it? Uh, never mind. It was just a anyway, shadow. I was wearing my No Brains, No Headache uh, shirt. By the way, we're making some merch, so stay tuned on that. But, um, yeah, I got a rip your float. You know how there's like a little foam on top? I grabbed it from the food truck and the wind caught this foam and it splattered all over my chest as if I was in a low-grade pornography. And uh, that was embarrassing. I was talking to somebody, so I had a, I had a stain on my shirt. But thank God for Tide to go, Pen. So there was... Um Back to Italian sodas, there was a store in the mall called Prairie Peddler when I was growing up, and it was like a coffee shop. And I'm I'd surprised always, it's not a large corporation now. Uh, no, they went out of business pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quick. Um, but I would get Italian sodas from there, and for like six years, I got them, and I didn't know that like cream was an option. And then when I found well, what it, what kind of salespeople do they have? Where no wonder why they didn't last as a business. <laughs> You're not offering cream with your Italian sodas. I and when you I, might as well just sell a gun without bullets. Get a sandwich without any meat. Get a grilled cheese without any cheese while you're at it. I just think of Avery. that's just toast. <laughs> There's always got to be more meat than the bread. I disagree, but the ratio is good. Uh, I've been getting more meat, extra meat in my burrito bowls lately. Really leveling up. What's the difference between a burrito bowl and nachos with chips on the side? Well, there's no chips in a burrito in a burrito bowl. But what if you get a burrito bowl with chips on the side? I don't think that's what you want because there's rice. Oh, rice and beans. I mean, you know, really, at the end of the day, anything could be nachos. And just a quick word of nachos. If the nachos get stuck together, it's one nacho. Yep. We could probably agree on that there. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know if I want to be dipping my chips into that. Plus, I think that's the whole point of the burrito bowl is to avoid the, the flour and the, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what gluten is in, you know, I don't really know. Uh, cause I was going to say you avoid the gluten, but there very well could be something in your burrito bowl that has gluten. I, I don't really know, uh, the, the gluten guidelines on the show, the ranch, when Hank, the guy that sits and drinks at the bar all the time, he's like, I'm gluten free. And he's just drinking a Budweiser. The bartender's like, Hank, I thought you said you were gluten free. He's like, I am he's like, You're drinking a beer. He's like, I'm not entirely sure. I know what gluten is. Clearly not. <laughs> 
I know some people that, you know, have the whole, you know, gluten challenge disability thingy. And uh, sometimes they're just like, fuck it. I wanna, I'm going to just be in pain because I want to eat a cheese pizza right now. I want to talk about this gap that we got to. It started out with sucking on Selma Hayek's toes and got to gluten intolerance. Oh, that's what it's called. Gluten intolerance. Sorry. Gluten challenged is what I was thinking. Glutard. Yeah. Well, does tequila have uh, gluten in it? I don't I'm not sure. I don't think I know um like Tito's always comes with the thing that says gluten free. Hmm. I mean tequila's made from a plant, so I don't think so. So if you're drinking tequila off of Selma Hayek's toes, you don't have to worry about that. Maybe gout, maybe you have to worry about gout. She has athlete's foot. Yeah. I have athlete's foot in, in my mouth. Otherwise yeah. known as herpes. Wasn't that you the other, or who was it? Somebody was telling me that their feet hurt, and like they pretty much were explaining gout. And I was like, "Dude, you have you have gout." I'm pretty sure I was there, but it wasn't okay. me. Okay, somebody was talking about drinking and how their foot hurts, and I was like, "Okay, that's pretty much the recipe for." I don't know. I am in yeah. perfect health, so I don't really know what gout is or gluten challenged. So. Maybe we should move on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I got screen door shenanigans, and I guess really it's only one question. How many screen doors do you think people walk through on a weekly basis, let's say? Let's break it down. Worldwide? Worldwide. So I've been seeing, I feel like I see a lot of uh, uh, people walking through them. Because I, I can't see. And I have actually experienced that. I have a number in my head, but I don't know if it's wildly high or Oh, wildly go high. ahead. I don't really know. 4,500? That's actually pretty good. Uh, I bet there's an epidemic sweeping the globe of people just hammering through a screen door. I mean, it's it's like the Rob Deere deck. Like, if you hit it with your knee first, it's going to break. And so I'm sure people do it all the time. Like, let me let me throw this one by you. Who breaks more screen doors, pets or humans? Ooh, man, that's a good question. In the, we'll go in the U.S. because I feel like the U.S. is the most. Okay, but it is a global uh, worry yeah. that we need to give focus to. I think screen doors are something. Well, I think after we're done recording, we should probably write a strongly worded letter to our local politicians about uh, screen door awareness. Just well, because, can, you know... Could you imagine going to a city commission meeting with, like, a mock-up screen door? And, like, walking <laughs> through it? What do you guys do? We sell tint for screen doors so that you can see them coming. Or, uh, like, in... It's in, just tape. <laughs> at the beginning of, like, a high school basketball game in the state tournament, instead of all the streamers or, like, the, the piece of paper you bust through, it's just a screen door. How satisfying would that be? Not as satisfying as watching the one cheerleader every year that goes to fix something on uh, yep. one yep. of those signs. And trying and just, too hard. And, and just gets crushed by 55. Well, and it's football players, too. Yeah. They're coming through <laughs> that. And it's like, honey, this is a piece of paper that's about to get ravaged, okay? We don't need to worry about it. Uh, on the show Two-A-Days, when uh, they're making the banner and the girl spells revenge is sweat instead of sweet. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's times like these where I'm thankful for our education, Matt. Dude, we got some good education. And honestly, you brought up screen doors, and I'm... I'll say Have this. you ever ran through one? I've ran into one, but I ran into... It the, didn't break? Mm -mm, I ran into the net. What kind of, yeah, what kind of went, mesh did they have on there? That's I was, industrial I was, I was strength. walking pretty slow, so I, like, rebounded. I didn't... I wasn't, true. like... You don't, you don't really walk too fast, yeah, ever. I got past, in college, I got past walking to class by the blind girl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. What's more embarrassing is having a school where a blind girl can just graduate with honors. Well, not, not taking anything against her, but... Well, at least you didn't walk into a sidewalk and knock your teeth out. That would be embarrassing. I did curb stomp myself. And oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Tell that story. First person ever to curb stomp themselves. So I had a couple thousand drinks one night, <laughs> and uh, I literally was so drunk that we got home from this party, and everyone I was with was like, Matt, get out of the car. And I'm like, bye. 
and I take two steps out of the car and literally just face plant right into a curb. Whole side of my face is scraped up, eyes swollen shut. I wake up the next morning covered in vomit and my own piss. Yeah, no, I saw you the next day. You were like, uh, like you know, when they have in Rome, they have like the dead popes for you to look at. That's what your roommates were like. They're like, dude, check out Matt. And I like peeled back the thing real quick, and you knew that I was there to look because you you must have been through this a hundred times by the time yeah. I got there. You knew to look at me so I could see your face, and then you just went right back to bed. And I was like, oh. That uh, looks like it's terrible. I tried this one chili and it set my mouth on fire and I had to drink a two liter of Mountain Dew. Dude, curb stomping yourself is really impressive. I was watching Tropic Thunder the other day where Tom Cruise's character is talking to the, uh, the oh, heroin God. dealers. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, why don't you take a step back and literally <laughs> fuck your own face? And he hangs up the phone and be like, who is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, who's the key grip here? <laughs> Go punch that director in the face really fucking hard. See, whoever did casting for Tropic Thunder should have been hired by the MLB to hire a fucking national anthem. Singer. I could argue that Tom Cruise's character in Tropic Thunder could have sang the national anthem better. Easily. Isn't he from Canada? He's Canadian. No, he isn't. Tom's not Canadian? No. Can we get a confirmation on that? Yep. I got Are it. you doing it? Yep. Yeah. No producer today called in sick. Surprise. Once again, we're producerless. Do we have. No, we don't have a producer. Syracuse, New York. Oh. Who am I thinking of? Keanu? He's Canadian. Keanu Reeves uh, is Canadian. Jim Carrey's Canadian. Ryan Reynolds. Pam Anderson. Or is it Carmen Electro? Mm, One of the two is Carmen. Can- yeah. Uh, is it Pamela? Pamela? So today's episode, we're just going to guess. Figure out, welcome to this segment, segment of who's Canadian. Some of the best work we've ever done, I'd say. Dude, Pamela Anderson has huge jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's Canadian. Hey! She's also it. 57. I don't care. <laughs> let me, oh, let me, uh, Pamela Anderson or Carmen Electra? Ooh, Matt. In their prime. In their prime? I, I say right now, it's Carmen Electra, hands down. Yeah, Carmen is uh, looking good uh, right now. If you watch The Last Dance, the episode that Carmen Electra came on, everyone's like, oh, ready then. It's like when you're watching, uh, you're in the living room with all your buddies, and you're watching The Last Dance, and Carmen Electra comes on, and you're just the one guy who raises their hand, and your buddy's like, hey, why'd you raise your hand? And you're like, oh, I thought we were supposed to do that when we got a boner. <laughs> You guys aren't carbon oh. electric comes on and all six bathrooms in the house are filled up. Everyone simultaneously. Dude, it off. It's like when you're younger and you watch like a little porno flick with your buddies and it is quiet <laughs> <laughs> and you got tunnel vision. Cause it's like, dude, I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. Don't look at me. Cause this is weird. You're like drinking. You're like shotgunning old duels and shit. It's just like, I'm wasted. You want to split a half a beer in the garage? Oh man. Let's do some air duster while we're at it. Shit. Let's get this party started. A little uh, HBO. That was back in the old day when HBO still had the uh, the erotica. I think they only had like one or two on there. What? I Ooh, I introduced. Well, you were looking in the wrong spot. Yeah, I, I, I introduced someone to uh, Pluto TV today. Oh, man. I can't go a day without watching Pluto TV. You want to know what I've been watching lately? Tropic Thunder, Gladiator, Truman Show. On repeat, King of Queens. It literally has, like, Dances with Wolves was on when I was, oh, when I, I was like, it literally has, like, some of the best movies, plus, like, it, whatever, oh, whatever, man. whatever you want to watch. If you're a sports person, CBS Sports News is on there. Oh, man. If you're a home person, like a home and garden, they have, like, 40 shows. Enough! There's so many channels. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain it. Earlier today, actually... I was kind. Of, I I every single day I get that afternoon feeling. I don't know what it is. Well, I know what it is, but I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I get that afternoon feeling. So I was like, I had a little bit of time before coming to the studio. Yeah. So I I sat in my chair like an old man does, and 
started watching Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. They are storming the, is it Normandy, correct? At, right. the, at the beginning at the of very it, beginning. when they open the boat and just everyone just... They call the, they call the, the gate to the boat, what is that called, the death tunnel? They are calling it the death tunnel. Where it's just like, you know you're going to get shot. Yeah, that that's actually like one of the, I would say up there for one of the best slash like most tragic opening scenes of any movie. Oh, it is wild. And I love that dude who just puts in a big old lipper in his lip and it's just like, oh, that's so badass. I want some beach nut right now. But uh, I, I had to stop. I had to go outside and go for a walk because I knew I was about to lock in for Saving Private Ryan. And we probably wouldn't be recording if I locked in. I would be like, you got to come over yeah. here. It was just, I'll, I'll phone in. Yeah, I'll <laughs> phone in. I, for the first 23 years of my life, thought Ben Affleck was in Saving Private Ryan. He's not? No. Wait, no, he's not. It's, Wait. It's an actor that looks a lot like him. Because he's, it's that actor just has a quick cameo, right? No, he's the guy that has the BAR. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he looks a lot like him. I know exactly who you're saying. Uh, let's get a name, though. Uh, Edward Burns. There you go. He was in uh, Entourage a few times. See, if you type in Edward Burns, it says Ben Affleck. Cause they look pretty identical. Well, that's just the way she goes. You you don't want to get locked into uh, Dances with Wolves or a Saving Private Ryan. If you have things to do... Mm -hmm. You get you gotta you can watch for five to ten minutes. You have a short window. If you go past that ten minute mark, clear your schedule and and just tell all your friends and family, don't talk to me for hundred and eighty minutes, please. Cause I need this time right now. Oh, the other day I fired up Oppenheimer two minutes in just <laughs> <laughs> and then I woke up at the end. <laughs> it was I, perfect. I did isn't it like a four hour movie? <laughs> I crushed one, dude. <laughs> I tried to watch Oppenheimer, and literally, I think I made it like less than 30 seconds, and I'm like, ah, I'm going to head to bed. It was like 9.30, and I was like, I'm going to put this on. I'm just going to wake up at 2.30 in the morning on my couch, confused of where I'm at. Dude, the other day, I was so, I was a little bored, so I looked up our local theater for like movie show times. Any new, I didn't recognize any new movie, Matt. And they had more show times for like old movies. Yeah, the, I saw they were playing the Goonies. Yeah, the they're playing the Goonies, and it's. I was like, wait, there's no movies out right now that are any worthwhile. Makes sense. I mean, I don't. I didn't really want to go into a dark theater for a while, but. Well, I told you that one time that I went to Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh boy! Like on one of the last days, it was in theaters. It's a great movie, by the way. Um. And I'm not just saying that it's got good reviews, uh, but I went in there and I was, it was in one of the smallest theaters and I get there. I'm like, sweet. It was like me and two buddies. I'm like, no one's in here. Awesome. As the movie starts, this family walks in. One of their kids is blind. Oh my goodness. So every time they speak in Russian in that movie, what, which is a lot, there's subtitles and you have the one parent that can read yelling through three other kids to the blind one what they're saying oh my sweet jesus yeah the the movie theater experience just it's it is slow it is joe biden yeah the that's what it is it is slowly dying so the spongebob and it is getting Pants ugly movie, 2004 deathly hollows part two yeah, tell me if you recognize any of the new movies besides Twisters. Uh, they've actually done a good job of advertising that. Oh, yeah, that one's... But I just, I hate the remake. We already had Twister. Twister, the old movie, has a special place in my heart, okay? Mm. When I had to go to my grandparents' house, True. they had two VHSs, one of which, Twister. So guess what we watched every other day? Twister. You got it. You guessed it correctly. Uh, Horizon, I think that's the one with... That's that is a middle school in North Bismarck that I attended. A Quiet one Place year. Day One. I've heard of that one. Oh my god! A Quiet Place Inside Out Two. I've heard of that one because it's like broken every box office record. Uh, but we can move on um, instead of just looking. I don't at the really local. want to. <laughs> 
Do uh, we have to? I just have this quick uh, bit on, you know how you go onto a browser and it shows your history and you're like, I need to delete that yeah, ASAP. Yeah. Freaking. Yeah. I was just about to say something. But, okay. Uh, but it shows it pops up like news articles that are clickbait. And uh, I, for whatever reason, am targeted with either the Chicago Cubs or 19 Kids and Counting. And I click on the 19 Kids and Counting one almost every time. What kind of algorithm do you have, brother? <laughs> A weird one. I understand the Cubs. I think anybody who has listened to the show can understand how you are getting a lot of Cubs uh, content, but... 19 kids and counting gotta explain that one uh well it was just it got me by the title because it says daughter from 19 kids and counting wears pants in front of parents for the first time what is she thinking does she does she want to be hung like an innocent woman during the salem witch trials what's going on here but after reading it apparently they're like super hardcore religion and so they always wear the women they wear bang each other. Wear, <laughs> no, that's not what you're gonna say. Wear skirts like long skirts. The denim ones. Yeah, yeah. That are like that's a ton of denim. Yeah. <laughs> you know how toasty it's gonna. And be so there? they're like they literally interviewed her and they're like, so how is it wearing pants for the first time in front of your parents? She's like, it took me a long time to build up the courage. And I was like, what? <laughs> and apparently, this stems from. A uh, book in the Old Testament, you might know it, uh, Deuteronomy, um, and it says one sentence, a woman shall not wear a man's garment. So pants are off limits to all females in that family. A woman shall not wear a man's garment? Yep. Who says, uh, it's 2024, I will find you a guy who's wearing a denim skirt, and I will bring him to you. And you will owe him or, or her, in a, whatever they're identifying as, an apology. I think to make a denim skirt, you literally probably need two pairs of jeans worth of No, material. you need to call the Levi's factory, and you actually have to fill out a form that makes you like one of their uh, vendor people. And then you have to spend like a minimum of like $20,000 a year. Well, I think if you got going. 19 kids, you might actually hit that pretty easy. Uh, what do you think... You know, at what point did those kids just kind of start walking out of the vagina? They're just like, doo -doo -doo. I did. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll go nine. Yeah, like the last ten were just like they came out of that bitch riding a tricycle. She, uh, she had three sets of twins or four sets of twins too. Oh my god! How does this? I don't want to get too graphic, Matt, but how does the guy? You know. How it, does he get his rocks off? I think it's like, have you ever thrown a penny into a wishing <laughs> well? <laughs> Did we just I have mean, sex? I, is there I, anything against porno in their uh, religion? Yes. <laughs> oh, I was about to say this guy's going to rely heavily on sedation. Uh, she went on to say is that. Is there anything against popping a few Viagras? Yes, they can't do anything. Can't have caffeine. They get this chick drunk before they bang or what's going on? I, they named all of their kids starting with J. This daughter's name is... I think I knew this, and it's upsetting me. <laughs> this daughter's name is Ginger. With a J? Yep. Holy moly, let's sign her up for therapy now. Goodness. Um, and then they came out that, like, uh, the oldest son was a child uh, predator. Yeah. But I was like, well... Like on his siblings? <laughs> a couple of them, yeah. But... Uh, Oof. And then he was on uh, that one website that they did a Netflix documentary on, the one about like having a second family. Um, there was a website yeah. that like thousands of people. He was like big into that. What do you think? Do these people have cell phones? What kind of family plan are they on? Uh, the only one I saw in the show of a cell phone was the one that the dad wore on his hip. You know, you know, I found out that there's a bunch of Amish people in Indiana. Yeah. I didn't know that. Indiana, Ohio. I thought it was like Pennsylvania, Ohio, and random parts of Minnesota. That's uh, what I thought it was. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana are big. And then uh, North Dakota actually has a pretty decent population of them. Really? Yep, southeastern North Dakota. Do you think we should... Should we try to get some sort of reality TV show that's a knockoff of Amish Mafia? 
Dude, and I, let's protect. Do we protect them or are we against them? Where do you want to be? I, I want to protect. Them. I, I want to be against. You the want Amish. to? Maybe go, I'll. We'll do that. I want to go to war with the Amish. Actually, I, no. Well, you kind. Well, they're not going to hear. They this. could have superhuman strength. They could be a touch retarded. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever watched the show Banshee? I told you to watch oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's there's a lot of Amish in there. Really. I was just kind of uh, too caught up on the Jahungas that were on the screen. 19 kids and counting. What in the uh, heck? Yeah, and she said that she wanted to discover herself, so that's what wearing pants does, apparently. Do you, do you think the the dad was just like a big baseball fan and just wanted to have one game but with his family? <laughs> uh, judging... Because that's, that's 21 people if you include the parents. Well, yeah. then minus the child predator, so that back down to 20. Yeah. Is he in jail? Yeah. For how long? Uh, five or ten years, okay. I think. He's five been in there. He's probably, he'll probably be getting out soon. Um, he also has like five kids. But yeah, there's a lot Jeez. of... Jeez. I don't get this. Josh, man. Jana, John, Jill, Jessa, Ginger, Joe. Stop. Josiah, Joy, Jedediah, <laughs> Jeremiah, Jason, James, Justin, Jackson, Johanna, Jennifer, Jordan, Josie. You know, I wish I could come up with a joke right now, but I can't. Well, the dad's name is James Robert, and he goes by Jim Bob. That upsets me the most. <laughs> Out of all of those. All right, let's move on. Jim Bob, more like Jimmy, as in a condom. You ever heard of it? No, you haven't. My goodness. Matt, how awkward is it when you go in for a handshake and the person has, like, nucks? Or vice versa, you you go in for the knucks and they do the handshake and it's like, come, on. didn't you see? I was, I, I initiated it, and then you went the opposite. So at open mic last week, I did. I really got ahead of that, and I saw Brando coming in, and he was a good twenty feet away from me, and yep. I just went, "Yep, no, you have to do it early." Yep. You know, a good handshake is a lot like taxes. Get it done early. Especially those guys in front of it. you see like every week or every other week. It's a nux is fine. If it's like a guy you're doing business with or you only see like once a month, once every two months, maybe a handshake then. Yeah. They had they don't know where my hand has been, you know. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's disgusting. What well you why what are you insinuating? I, I was just saying they don't know where it's been. What are you it's been in my pocket? You know, up that homeless dude's ass for a while. He said he had something stuck <laughs> up there, just trying to help. Please, you try to help the, the less fortunate. Next thing you know, uh, I, just, I just got a phone call. God damn it! Um, I'm gonna lose my shit. No, the handshake. Are you a big handshake guy, like a practice out routine handshake thingy, Majigger? Uh no. I mean, I I was at one point. I was watching The Bachelorette the other day, and these guys, you know, it's pretty much just a huge orgy. I found out, and these guys are vying for spots in said orgy, uh, so they're really trying to impress her. And one of the guys tried to make up the whole handshake thing. And I was like, you know what? Maybe if you're, you know, trying to, you know, finger blast your girlfriend in the seventh grade, then a handshake would be necessary. But these are these are grown adults in their late twenties, early thirties. So there's a guy Let's that's, leave the handshake that's at on the door. there, and he was like a dude that just looks like he gasses light beers. Yeah, and Big just guy. built, and is his picture is just like him smiling, got a little nice beard, and. uh friend of the show wyatt posted something about him and i commented on it and i was like this guy looks like one of those actors for those slimming t-shirts yeah like making fun of the guy the casual male xl yeah and that guy replied to me is he coming on the podcast he probably could probably would we should get him on bachelorette questions we should have him in person so he can kick my ass where's he from um i don't know we'll fly down there I think he played college football or something. We will get him on, but yeah, the old handshake, awkward. You ever shook hands with Benjamin Franklin? Polish the pewter. Yeah, I've a couple times. 
Oh, uh, or what's the other one where the word means pickles? Uh, is that pewter? Polish pewter is silver. Polish. Okay, yeah. Here, what's the oh uh, jerkin McGurkin? A gherkin is a type of pickle. Fun fact. Uh, wank. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there is a <laughs> wank tug. I, I just clicked on to an article that could keep me busy for a while. It is 500 ways to say you're jerking off. Yeah, what if I told you I'm racking one out right now? <laughs> Bang yourself? It's like, are you, I'm sorry, are you squatting at the gym or are you at home? Uh, Donald Trump firing his apprentice. That's too much. Too soon. Fire off some knuckle children. Donald Trump <laughs> would roll over in his grave if he heard what you just said. He's not dead. Oh. Ma <laughs> Making stomach pancakes. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. One-handed baseball. Rub the nub. Okay, let's move on. Handshakes with Benjamin Franklin. Why do you have Airbud? This is the second week in a row we're talking about this goddamn golden retriever. Okay, well, I wanted to get more into it because I found out that I am a big fan of Airbud. I think we established that. So, Airbud, I watched, <laughs> almost regrettedly, I watched uh, Airbud 3 World Pup. Got some plot holes that I want to address. You... There should be a position out there. I don't know if it's a government position or private, but there should be a position out there for people. You can tell people how sh good these movies are, and then we'll know they're shitty. Because I've never talked to anyone who's watched more shitty movies than you, and you follow them through. Oh, it's also, it's weird. I watch almost exclusively shitty movies. Oh, yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. You said Dances with Wolves earlier. I was like, dude, you didn't watch that. That's kind of out of your radar. Yeah, I mean, I watched it in school, but that's kind of because we had to. We watched it in school? Yeah, I watched it. Did, did it take a whole week to get through the thing? Yep. Wow, best week ever. I don't it, remember that. Um, uh, It was in my North Dakota history class where there was seven people in there. Um, and two of them went to rehab. One of them got expelled. Like, while you were in class? It, while, like, during the duration of it. They went to rehab? Two of them did. And then, uh... Do I know these people? 100%. All right, we'll talk after yeah, the show. Um, one of them transferred, and one of them got expelled. So there was three of us left. Hey, nothing... So for North Dakota history, one week, we literally just watched Dances with Wolves. Yeah, well, not a whole lot of history. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it, was, it was fun, though. But Air Bud, World Pup, uh, pretty good film. Horrible reviews, straight to VHS. Uh, so the dog plays soccer, obviously. And I've come to a okay. conclusion that literally every Air Bud movie, any kid in the movie has at least one dead parent. Really? Like, they'll meet, like, the English girl from world pup literally comes in just like hey my, my dad was at 9 11 yeah it's like my dad's dead it's like didn't even get your name but thanks um and maybe one of the biggest plot holes of all time is that buddy at the end of the movie wins the women's world cup with the u.s women's national team what year did this come out uh, 2000, I think. Wow, they're really setting the trend early. So you're trying to tell me that Airbud 3 World Pup, is that the title? Am I correct in saying that? Yep. So you're trying to tell me that Airbud 3 World Pup has a few plot holes in it, huh? I'm shocked. I, for one, am in disbelief right now. And Airbud got the neighbor's... Canceled. He got the neighbor's dog pregnant, pregnant? at a house party. Dude, the dude parties? Yeah. Dude, Airbud's getting down. And then all the puppies get stolen, and it's pretty sad. So is that just the precursor to 101 Dalmatians? Yeah, but oh, it's... I saw somebody the other day who looks like Corella DeVille. I was like, jeez. Yeah, where did your life go wrong? Well, smoking the cigarettes with the filter. Yeah. And so he wins the female women's world cup 
as a male dog. That's not fair. The, you know, when I was playing sports and I went to a house party and was fornicating, I got kicked off the team. <laughs> but Airbud does it, and he's yeah. winning w- World Cups, apparently. Airbud's just banging down at a house party and then wins the Women's World Cup. I was thinking about it, though. It's like I had a bigger problem with a male dog playing in the Women's World Cup than I did with the fact that there was a dog playing in the World Cup. Yeah, you probably should have taken that into consideration first. But you didn't. You do you just go blind? You see Air Bud, you go blind. Yeah, the ah, the volleyball movie kind of sucks. I haven't seen that one in a while. Yeah, I'm an OG Air Bud guy. Give me the basketball one with the and the dude, the clown. Is he a clown? I will say saddest movie. And are they feeding him pudding the whole time? That can't be good for a dog's digestive oh, system. We need to talk about that. About 90, over 90% of dogs are lactose intolerant, and he ate vanilla pudding the entire time. Oh, my. Do you think that was a bit of an oversight by the people in Also, like, who's getting it? vanilla pudding when chocolate is right there? That is true. Well, dogs, dogs can't have chocolate. That's a known fact. Dogs can't have pudding. <laughs> also a known fact. Well, we didn't know that until now, so I'll give the screenwriters a little bit of a break on this one. Here we are again. We're talking about movies again. Dude, if it's I, not food, it's movies. I'll talk about another Air Bud movie next week. Let me know which one you'd like me to talk about. Please, no. All right, let's let's uh, let's keep moving on. We got Matt leaving us for a week, so we got to get the old show on the road. You excited for vacay? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be a huge sack of shit the entire week, and I can't wait. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to sit at a lake cabin. Nice. And go on the lake. There you go. All right. We got Olympics back for the second week in a row. This is our ranking game we play every so often. Uh, we had a little bit of a hiatus, but we're back doing it. Pretty much what we do is we pick a topic. This week is stand-up comedians. And then Matt and I will go back and forth and rank our favorites with gold, silver, bronze, lost in the medal round. Uh, rules state that we can't have the same picks. Rules also state that we're going to alternate uh, back and forth. This is also open for interpretation. Uh, last week, I got Matt with a real doozy of an interpretation, so you got to watch out for that. And you can vote on this, so check out our social media. Type in No Brains, No Headache, No Brains, No Headache podcast. Really any combination yeah, we'll pop up. We're pretty popular on the socials now, so uh, we, look at uh, that. We pop up a little. Cute All right, shows. Matt. After your terrible outing last week, I guess we don't know the results yet. Uh, you can go first. I can go first. All right, the Olympics of stand-up comedians. Like I said, we're going to award medals to our favorites, and I do got to say before we get started, you know, when I was doing my research, making the list, I do have a gut feeling that there's a lot of recency bias with this maybe not i mean there's a lot of great classics from out the years we're gonna only get four that's the all we're gonna get matt is four yep out of all of the greats so you gotta bear with me there uh but i'm i'm not pandering to the crowd i'm gonna go with my first stand-up comedian he has uh hit the scene lately he's hotter than a pistol he goes by the name of shane gillis that's my gold pick, and I actually have uh, some more entertainment for us. Uh, yeah, back. Oh, you're caught. <laughs> Anything can happen. This crowd is hungry for more retarded guys, and <laughs> frankly, I don't think we've seen enough retarded guys. How about a retarded racist? Would you like to see? <laughs> He's on Kill Tony the other day, yeah. absolutely crushing his. I got one. Oh more. my god! Wait, what are you guys? <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey. What a great lady. I talked to her backstage and (laughs) wonderful woman. The tits are real. (laughs) I thought he breaks character. Excuse me. Excuse me. A lot of people are saying her tits are fake. They're not fake. I touched them. (laughs) And (laughs) great tits, wonderful tits. American tits, and that's... Tell you what, if you like Donald Trump or not, you can't argue that that is such a great impersonation. Yep. He 
leveled up. Ever this whole assassination attempt played into Shane Gillis's favor. Now he's impersonating. Yeah, he has before, but now he's taking it to a next level. And I mean, he's just breaking the internet, Matt. Please don't do that on camera. Thank you. And uh, so he he's just doing great things. Uh, I believe he's a Pennsylvania guy. Yep. So uh, Shane Gillis, I just I had to go with him as my gold medal pick. I didn't do any research, but thinking about it, I have four that I really want, and I have kind of a 1A, 1B, 1C, and so I'm going to go with an old school guy that he's so funny with damn near everything he says, passed away not too long ago, I'm going to go with Norm MacDonald. Oh, wow. Fantastic pick. Like I said, there's so many, you know, some of these didn't even come on my radar, but uh, Norm MacDonald, he he was a dual threat. He was in a lot of funny comedies. He was in uh, Billy Madison, Dirty Work, uh, probably several other movies I can't think of off the top of my head. But R.I.P. Norm MacDonald, excellent pick. One clip that I recently saw that I hadn't seen forever ago, the guy that I always call you, you know, the guy that plays Stumpy and Out Cold. Yeah, uh, David Feichner. Yeah. He's talking to him, and he's like, what do you like to drink? He's like, you like beers, IPAs? And he pans over to the other guy. He goes, well, what else do you like to drink besides fucking jizz? <laughs> Jeez. Norm MacDonald was so good at being uh, really dry. But he didn't know what he was going to say. Yeah, he, was just, he, he would make... Like, when you watch stand-up comedy and say somebody's kind of bombing or they're not taking over the crowd, it gets really awkward, and they clam up. It's You, you shut them down. You got to get that crowd early. Otherwise, it's tough to get them back. Not for a novice. Norm MacDonald could make that awkward situation hilarious. Yeah, he... Honestly, one of a kind. And I don't think there's another person that does what Norm MacDonald does. Excellent pick. Well, I'll get into the silver round, silver medal round. The recipients will be uh, with my pick. This one, I've seen this guy in person. I was about 10 feet away from him, and this was still kind of early in our comedy career where I was just kind of, I was trying to figure it out. And when I went to this comedy club out in New York, I wanted to enjoy the show, obviously, but I was observing I said, how, how does comedy work, especially in a big city like New York? This is a classic comedy club, the Comedy Cellar in New York, in Manhattan. It uh, doesn't really get much better than that. But I saw Chris Rock, and that's who's going to be my pick. Um, the, the saying of, you don't remember the jokes, you remember the experience, is so true because I don't remember any of his jokes, except I do remember I was laughing my ass off. And it was a surprise appearance. I didn't know he was coming out that night. And, Matt, you'll love this. We can't forget that he was in Beverly Hills Ninja. What character was he? He was the bellhop. Bellhop, dude. okay, yeah. And then he, he tries to have Chris Farley's character. Yeah, when he's chasing the chicken around. He's chasing <laughs> the chicken around, and then uh, Chris Farley hops in the backseat of his convertible. And he tells Chris Rock's character to drive, and he's like, don't, just listen to what I say. And then they pan to the next scene, and they're in a car wash, <laughs> in a convertible. <laughs> yeah, God, Chris Rock, that's a great pick. Dual threat pick. Yep, double threat there. American tits. Uh, yeah, he's obviously been in uh, Grown Ups and all sorts yep. of others. Good friends with Sandler and David Spade, and those guys don't want to name drop too many. But my silver medal pick has got to be Chris Rock. He's been doing it for a long time. And he's just classic, so that's my pick. Uh, all, I think I'm getting, this is my 1B pick, and I think I'm getting someone that's kind of like edgier Chris Rock, and I'm going to go with Chappelle. Okay. Dave yep. Chappelle. Definitely was on my radar. Was, is one of those guys, comedy so weird, because he was like the Chappelle show, and he was touring, and he was the biggest thing in comedy. Yeah, and like, what was that, the early 2000s, would And then say? he disappeared for, like, eight, ten years. Was doing nothing. He's like he's like the Tom Brady of stand-up comedy. Yeah. Tom Brady, did you know Tom Brady had a ten-year gap yep. in between winning Super Bowls? That's wild. Yeah. Um, but Chappelle, the 
one of my favorite Chappelle stories of all time actually happened in Bismarck. So during his like hiatus, he showed up in Bismarck and did a show here. And he went to a local brewery where a guy was playing music and he grabbed the mic and he was just smoking weed. And Dave Chappelle and a local musician in Bismarck had to get separated from fighting each other. Yeah, we I think we've talked about that before on the show, and it's just it's it's crazy that somebody was so high strung on their own. Like if I was if I was but, doing stand up and let's say I'd be like, dude, you saved me. If Freddie Mercury came in and he's like, Hey, do you mind if I grab the mic and sing? Here's the mic, here's my phone, here's my wallet, keys to my house, I'll deed it over to you. You can have it. Because fuck them. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> I'm trying to find some uh, Chappelle show classics, but it's so the, good. Like the, It's Nick Cannon, daddy. He's hilarious. The racial draft was one of my favorite uh, skits ever. And then one of the announcers is actually Bill Burr. I don't know if you noticed that. Yep. One of my favorite Chappelle jokes, <laughs> when he's talking about uh, trans sports, and he's like, if you put LeBron James in the WNBA, he scores one million points a game. But uh, yeah, we can get in. That's my... Uh, I got here when I could. Shit, you're not my fucking mom. Oh. <laughs> Chappelle show skit. Yeah, it's just get really kicked off great. of YouTube for playing music. Oh, that, that, that was some background noise. That, it'll be fine. Honestly, I hope people do notice. I hope they come to us. Because fuck them. That's why. <laughs> uh, uh, Chappelle, that's my silver pick. Who do you got? Uh, for what does he play? Uh, is it Prince? Where he's like playing hoops. He's like, Shimon. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Chappelle is in the cinematic movie of the millennium, Con Air. Oh, yeah, he is. He gets set on fire absolutely love or he sets movie. a guy on fire all right i got a big pick here uh i think i'm just gonna go back to um just a classic uh comedian actually hold on i gotta play this one real quick for you matt ohio come on <laughs> ohio come on <laughs> Sorry, that's from Beverly Hills Ninja. Fun fact about Matt and I, we discovered Beverly Hills Ninja years ago when it came out. I think we watched that VHS at your place over and over. We broke the VHS. I think at one point, it was Jordan's VHS, and at one point I had had it for like two years because I wouldn't give it back. That's okay. Okay, on to the bronze medal round. Having a great time making this one. I can't, I can't believe we haven't done stand-up comedians It's pretty yet. wild. <laughs> when I came up, I was like, that, that that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to go with um, another kind of recency bias pick. I'm going to go with Mark Normand. Uh, if anyone's been on TikTok, he just, uh, it's like his clips just rule TikTok. But he's hes bigger than ever right now. I really love his uh, podcast, We Might Be Drunk. He's just so funny. He, I, like, I try to emulate his style to a certain degree, He's uh, so he can't. he's so dry. Yeah, I I try to do that, but he just does it in a way that it, it it can't be repeated. It his voice sounds like he has smoked some of the best weed in the world. I do got a clip for you. you ready for it? Yeah. What's All your right. what's the your cleavage move? is distracting. Just looking forward here. <laughs> Facing Mecca. But you've put the sunglasses on, so I can't see when you look. That's the point, sister. <laughs> what are you doing with this dress? Come on. I just got this dress today. Oh, uh, it's a caper. I've never worn yellow before on the show. I didn't even notice it was yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Lauren Compton has some breathtaking cans. Yeah, so that was on uh, first date with Lauren Compton. He made an appearance, but... I had a, I did have a phase there where I was looking up Mark Norman appearances on any other podcast, and it's just so entertaining. Uh, yeah, he's sweeping the nation right now and and the globe. I mean, he's all over the place. Just just a, a Jew from New York, I think. You know, just making it in the old comedy scene. So good for him. All right, my bronze pick, and I I need this to be on our podium, one of our podiums just because he's probably one of the best to ever do it, and I'm going to go with Louis C.K. Okay, that's fair. 
That is very fair. Uh, I think if he didn't jerk off in front of people and get canceled. I think that was probably his best career move, personally. I mean, he basically just did the thing where he's like, I'm just going to not do anything for a while and then come back and now no one cares. Uh, yeah, he did do the right thing where I don't really know like how true that allegation is or what yeah. happened with it. Uh, regardless, it's just something weird to come back yeah, from. It is, that's tough. It's a tough headline to get over, but he did do the right thing. Where I'm sure he, you know, apologized to the people that deserve said apology. But yeah, you're right. He did disappear. Then when he came back, he actually made fun of himself. Yeah. So um, there was there was one comedian that he said he got into comedy because of Louis C.K. And then Louis C.K. got canceled for jerking off in front of him. And then this com this comic's like, that's why I got into comedy. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that's a that's a classic. You shank, shaking hands with Benjamin Franklin right in front of somebody. Making some stomach pancakes. Lucy K. Excellent yep. pick. And I mean, I think regardless, people are going to be upset at us no matter how we do these podiums because yep. there's just so much talent out there. Like my honorable mentions list. Like it could literally be 40 pages long. Yeah. And I, don't, I just feel like, oh man, I don't even know what to go with here. I got two options. What do I do? What do I do? I'll pick you if you pick me. Okay. <laughs> I want to have a well-rounded podium. So I thought long and hard about this. I'm going to go with Nikki Glazer. Good pick. Uh, she absolutely crushed the roast of Tom Brady, and she's just a very successful, uh, beautiful woman in comedy. I, I really love her honesty just about her lifestyle uh, because, you know, it's it's got to be tough out there being a woman in comedy, realistically. I mean, just think about it. It's got to be tough. But she does an excellent job with it, and I love every podcast appearance she makes. And uh, I think she's actually coming to North Dakota in the next couple of months. Yeah. But I wanted to go with people that I've actually seen. Fun fact about me, um, I... Never went to a comedy show until after I started doing comedy. I don't know if you knew that, but I obviously saw specials and, uh, and I don't some think of I my honorable went. mentions. I'll get into my history of of being a comedy fan, but I never went to a show until after I started doing comedy myself. And still, I'm like, uh, you're going to hit up a show this weekend. I'd probably go with you if, if I'm around or if I wasn't gone or whatever, but... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, like obviously I want people to support comedy, but I'm not too crazy on going. Maybe that, is that selfish? <laughs> like I'm just not crazy on going to other comedians, but I do love performing. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not huge on like the last show I went to was as friends with a lot of the comedians, and I just sat down in the green room and drank. Like the most of them were like up there, like getting ready to go on stage, and I was like, all right, I'll be down here. To, like, me i will be funneling bush lights into my anus cavity um the rest of the evening so for my lost in the metal realm pick i was gonna go with nate bargazzi but i haven't seen him yet i'm going to see him um so this could change but i'm gonna go with the real homer pick and no one's gonna know who this guy is unless you are a true og of the podcast and i'm gonna go with chris porter uh chris porter has a special out there that was my f i watched it every month in college it's called ugly and angry yes and this dude is like a six foot three funny looking dude that wears bell bottoms and hates goddamn everything and he is probably my biggest comedy inspiration and he is just a funny guy let's see if i can't pull up a little clip here his his Instagram's just chock full of it. I the other side like you want me to. She worried about the craziest shit too. First night I stayed at her place. We're going to sleep. She says you need to sleep on this side of the bed. So that's fine. It's the other side like your side or something. She said no, this side's closest to the door. You need to sleep there in case someone breaks in. <laughs> tries to rape me <laughs> you'll be on that side <laughs> so 
this happen a lot? Because <laughs> if it's gotten to a point where you've had to start to prepare for it, I believe you have grounds to break your lease. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Dude's going to break in, get all the way to the bedroom, and go, fuck it, she's on. She worried about the crazy she's shit. The other side. <laughs> she's like, you also believe... Make, make me think that I would sleep through a rape. Yeah, he's he's got an appearance on, I think it's the Bob and Tom show, a radio show, and he talks about, I think he's like 37 at the time, and he talks about uh, like women his age, and the first one he's like, people are really uh, career-oriented and, su- and successful, so not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Porter is great. You got to check him out if you haven't heard him. Yeah, uh, honestly, just if... if I implore you, if you do not do anything, do this. Follow him on Instagram, and his clips that he posts are just awesome. Definitely uh, worth your time. So let's quick go through our podium, and then we'll get in some honorable mentions. Uh, I have Mar. I have uh, Norm Macdonald, Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., and Chris Porter in that order. I went with Shane Gillis, Chris Rock, Mark Norman, Nikki Glaser. Obviously, there's only four spots, but... This was one where I had a ton of honorable mentions. I mean, Bert and Tom. Yep. I mean, you, yeah, we, we could go. I had one I was considering for my podium was, is Stavros Halkius. Oh, uh, he's so funny. Yeah, he's a, a just a Greek god, you could say. Really kind of came out of the scene in the last couple of years, probably since about COVID. If you don't know who he is, you would recognize him if you saw him. Yeah, He's Stavros, all over the place. Yeah, he is just a G. Uh, let's just go through him back and forth. I had... Excuse me. Uh, Rodney Carrington. He oh, is a great. double that threat. Be... He plays guitar and sings songs as well as um, his comedy. He kind of had a little bit of a rough patch there. I think he went through a greasy old divorce and kind of derailed his, his career. His, but his stuff's on YouTube. Yeah, so. his golf joke. Which one's that? Do you remember? Where it? he's like, I got to take a shit. And he's like, well. And he hits the ball into the bushes. He's like, do you take a shit? And he's like. Yeah, but now I don't have socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got a joke about, uh, like, when men see tits, like, they act like it's, like, a deer or something, where it's like, hey, I found some. <laughs> what are those tits? Shh, get down. <laughs> They're going to see you. Uh, that's. Here's, here's a deep dive for you. Dane Cook. Dane Cook, if the if we did this in the fifth grade, yeah. we, we would be fist fighting over who gets to pick Dane Cook over because that was the only comic I knew. Well, I think he took advantage of well, maybe it was just timing coincidence, but I think the reason we listened to him so much was because he was right during when like iPods, yep, and like Apple Music was coming out, so they were having comedy specials on there. I remember you would download like a joke, you would get yeah. one joke, it'd be yeah. like. Oh, here's Dane Cook Kool Aid Man, and it'd be like four minutes long. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no, we're gonna clean this up before my dad gets home. Otherwise, he's gonna beat the shit out of me. Let me hit you with this one, Lewis Black. Oh well, I, I did. We got more Dane Cook. The one joke where he goes, uh, he grew up with like a bunch of sisters or whatever, and he had to wear a tampon just to fit in. <laughs> oh yeah. And then as a kid, they would uh, have the slip and slides. That's when it came out, but they wouldn't check for rocks underneath. <laughs> slip and bleed from the anus. So I was oh, like, yeah. hey, Dad, watch me. <laughs> yep. Uh, Lewis Black, great. Uh, I also had, as just an honorable mention, I have I never saw a show because he, he died years ago uh, to a drug overdose, I believe. Mitch Hedberg, if you know who that is. Uh, I, I love his comedy. He... He's got the one-liners. He's the one-liner king, you could say, where he will go on stage for however long, and he'll just do one line after another. And I'm talking about jokes, not uh, cocaine, just to be clear. That's backstage. But I did hear that uh, this guy was such a gnarly drug addict, he would shoot up his heroin like into his legs because like he ran out of spots to shoot up that wasn't like healed properly, and he had gangrene. Ooh, and they could smell it in the green room. That's gross. Yeah. Uh, I would say one that well, I think we're going to get the most shit for, and he's a really good dude, is Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. He was... Oh, I did have him right there. I guess I forgot him. <laughs> Bill Burr. 
Uh, I have Artie Lang. I never yeah. actually saw his comedy. I don't know if I haven't looked too hard for it. I'm sure I could find it, but I never actually saw his comedy. I've read both of his books, and I'm a big fan of his movies. But uh, yeah, he's off the deep end now. So yeah, one of the first comedy specials i remember watching like front to back not just listening to like things on an ipod was aziz ansari and i really liked his earlier stuff it's good shit i mean you could go down the line george carlin classic uh that i mean there, there's so many comedians yeah um i do you got any dqs yeah it was bill cosby yeah that's a good one um I don't like Kevin Hart that much, but I don't know I feel if like I was, he's more. He's just a superstar I actor now. I wouldn't DQ him. No, I'm not DQing him. I'm yeah. okay with that. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's. It's really hard to DQ comedians being an amateur comedian. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. We went a lot longer than I anticipated, but I hope you guys, our listeners, our loyal listeners, enjoyed it. Speaking of stand up comedy, we actually have a couple of upcoming shows this fall, so make sure you check them out. We have our first one, uh, just actually booked it the other day, Saturday, September 28th at Dakota Stage Theater. That's in downtown Bismarck on Main. Matt and I will be there. Haven't decided on our lineup for sure yet. Uh, haven't even announced this yet, so yeah. this is you're getting the exclusive uh, info from us. So September 28th, that's a Saturday. Dakota Stage Theater, it's a classic venue here in downtown Bismarck right next to the Blarney Stone can't miss it stay tuned follow us and you'll see when tickets go for sale on that then we also have thursday october 17th at laughing sun brewing uh we played i played there twice before a really good venue they take really good care of us and uh they just they always have a great crowd uh really enjoy the vibes there i really like the stage um then i think that's all we're gonna say for now uh, do you want you guys to know I'm working on a comedy for charity show working on details for that I just I got some more information back today to make a little more progress there so uh, trying to give back to the community through our comedy so we're looking at late October early November for that one so stay tuned and then we do have more shows coming up but that's all I'm comfortable with announcing now Matt what can our listeners do to if they want their fix? Of no brains, no headache. How can they get it? Uh, leave us a rating or review on Apple. I'll say this because I'm going to be gone for a little bit. If For every rating we get on Apple. Just rating? I'll just rating. I will drink a beer per rating next okay. episode. All right. You heard it here first. We're going to get Matt drunk because I'm going to start paying people under the table. To give us some ratings. And that's perfectly fine with me. But, uh, yeah. Leave us a re rating review. Apple, Spotify, subscribe on YouTube. Yes. Follow us on all social media platforms. You can watch the show on YouTube. You asked for it. We delivered. So you need to be watching on YouTube if you aren't already. But thank you so much for listening. That was episode 209. And we will be back next week with episode 210. Peace, love, and dope. This is a freestyle to the top of the dome. Here we go. And I do it again, 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 again. I do it only once. Again, 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 again. I do it